This is the book of Matthew, chapter 22, and verse 36 through 40. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Yahweh Shai said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhai Kudash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhai Kudash, Brakhtam. To you, Zaquanium, Wa'akim, Wa'akwath, you know, you elders, you brothers, you sisters, the hopeful elect, out there laboring, keeping the commandments to the best of your ability, giving diligence, making your calling and election sure, and of course, keeping faith in the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His beloved Son, our Lord, our Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, in these last days, in these perilous times that we're living in. This is Brother Peshai, Bon Yash Alu. And this will be a quick lesson through the Spirit and Prophet Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and I pray this will be a faith builder. Edifying, you know, encouraging, you know, um, motivational, you know, if we I came out there, I believe in Yahweh Shem Al Shah on the front lines, laboring, giving diligence, making call and lecture sure, you know, going to the topic of true brotherly love, which we didn't learn, you know, growing up in this wicked world, this upside down world, you know, plus we was under the curses, you know, but now them curses can translate to our enemy, to our enemies, pursuant to Deuteronomy 30th chapter and verse seven, right? But part of those curses. That was placed upon our people for breaking the Heavenly Father's Lord's commandments was our eye shall be evil towards our brother. Right? But coming back into this, you know, coming to this faith, you know, coming back to remembrance of um our heritage, our culture, you know, um our ways, you know, serving how Bashim Al Shah, his ways, right? <clears throat> you start growing again, you know. You start growing in his faith and his truth and learning, you know, um, like I like I just said through the spirit, our heritage, our culture. You know, that brotherly love. And I'm going to give some precepts, right? About King David, Jonathan, you know. And Osme, man, we, we walk, you know, um, um, and following the footsteps of our big brother, Yahweh Shai. Right? He's our big brother. He's our mediator. He's our high priest. He's our he's a sacrificial lamb. He's our king, you know. He's all of that, man. Our big brother, Yahweh Shai. And he showed forth true brotherly love. Because scripture say what? Uh... Let's get this right here. John 15 and 13 right quick. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You see that? And who, who did that for us? Yahweh Shai. So that's love right there. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And, you know, he got crucified for the entire nation of Israel, but starting with the elect. You know, his friends, his brothers, you know. So through the spirit, you know, going to this topic, true brotherly love. From there, let's read the scripture one more time from the top, though, right? And break it down as I go. Because you had these um, wicked scribes and Pharisees, you know, trying to tempt him, you know, trying to, you know, catch him up in his words by asking these questions. But, you know, Allah, you have shot in all things. So Matthew 22, verse 36. I'll start verse 35. It says, uh, matter of fact, let's start verse 34. It says, but when the Pharisees, when the Pharisee had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So he basically asked him, like, what's the greatest commandment in the, in the law? And it's 613 commandments. Yahweh Shah said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, thy power, your God, right? With all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. You know, so I'm going to read on down to break it down through the spirit. Verse 39 and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets you see so why did our lord yeah how should i make that statement because if you love the heavenly father with all your mind all your heart all your soul you're going to be keeping his commandments man you won't keep the things he tell you you're not going to commit idolatry because you know that's going to move the heavenly father to anger provoke him to jealousy you know, you're not going to commit spiritual fornications. You're not going to do abominable works because the Heavenly Father hates abomination. So you're not going to do abominable works. Basically, you'll be keeping the laws to the best of your ability in this corruptible flesh. If you, you know, if you love the Heavenly Father, 
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Then he said, the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your brother as you love yourself. Why? If you love your brother as you love yourself, you're not going to commit adultery on him. You're not going to, you know, covet things that he have. You know, back then they had cattle, sheep, gold, silver, oxen, you know, um, you know, stuff like that, land. You're not going to covet another brother's, you know, things. You know, today's time, you're not going to covet, you know, same thing, you know, but today we don't got, you know, cattle, oxen and stuff like that. <laughs> brothers may have cars, whatever the case, you know, you know, a, a more expensive homes or whatever. Right. You're not going to sit there and covet what another brother's another brother has and end up, you know, trying to harm him for it. You know, if you love your brother as you love yourself, that means whatever the brother is, that's his. You're going to love him. You're going to treat him with respect, you know. So that's why I said the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So, you know, we all grew up, you know, in school and they mentioned that, you know, treat others how you want to be treated. So you got to love your brother as you will love your own self, man. So would you want to think about it like. That's why our Lord Yahweh Shah said, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Because those two commandments covers all the commandments. If you love the Heavenly Father, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, if you list out different commandments around the scripture, you're going to be keeping all of them to the best of your ability because you love the Heavenly Father with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. If you, you know, uh, love your brothers, you love yourself, all the commandments written about, you know, uh, uh, committing adultery or, or murdering your brother like Cain did Abel. You know, or uh, covering someone's land, you know, covering their, you know, their whatever, you know, you're not going to do none of those things because you love him as you love yourself, man. So that's true brotherly love. And, you know, we're coming back into that in this faith and this truth as we grow, you know, because like I mentioned earlier, we wasn't taught that in this, you know, wicked world where we grew up at in the ghettos and the slums. You know, these jakes in the world, man, they don't have that. You know, they, they, they give that false illusion like they do. Oh, this is my day one homie right here. You know, we do licks together. If you can't break bread, he fake. I had a dollar left on my plate. You know, you, you know, they were both in the store. They both got 50 cent cakes and all of this. But guess what? He ended up dying. Other one up snitching. And all type, a lot of stuff be happening, man, within Jake's and the hood. You know, they don't really love each other, man. They switching each other, for, you know, over money, you know, over shoes, over women, you know, over fame. You see, that's not a true brotherly love, right? Like, a quick, I mean, there's a couple of examples. You got Jack Boy and Kodak Black. They grew up together. But now, look, they spilling the dirt on each other they've been doing since they was children. You know, that's not true brotherly love. Now, they grew up with each other. They, when they was with each other, everyone was, you know, old. Oh, man, they were real close. Those were brothers. And they used to say that's with each other. It's my brother, my, you know, my brother. They ain't really brothers, man. That's not true brotherly love. You had these Jakes in um, New York City. They had a song called Brotherly Love. But <clears throat> this dude, cousin, he has beef with. So make it make sense, man. You know? And that whole gang activity and all of this, that's, these dudes, they finished. I seen a video. These two Jakes were getting locked up. And then um, the judge said, I'm, I'm locking you up for this time the third in narcotics. I'm locking you up for this time the third. Then he was like, wait, I'm the only one getting charged with narcotics? Then he looked at his man's like, you snitching, you know? So there's no love, man, within these jakes in the hood. We learn that in the truth. You come to this faith in this truth, that's when you truly start, you know, you know, uh, we serve one another, you know, as we will serve our Lord. And we love one another as well. You see? Now, of course, you got a lot of brothers in here. Well, let me not say a lot, but you have you have agent spies crept in unawares within the different camps. And, you know, I heard different stories from the elders and apostles on down to different brothers, different, you know, they got that experience. I myself personally didn't go through it within my walk in his faith and his truth. But just based on their experience, I could learn from their experience how some brothers would come in, you know, cover brothers money. You know, every week they get paid, they, they call in a brother, ask him to need help. And you have a whole phone list of brothers they're going to call for for money. You know, Jake's like that not going to last long. The Lord going to put them to death because they using, they misleading, not misleading. They misusing the sheep, right? They miss, they taking the brother's kindness for weakness, man. You know, Jake's like that. They, ain't, they don't last long. You see, you got this other Jake that was saying there, this dude, man, I forgot what they called him. But this dude was saying they're going from camp to camp, committing adultery, man. See what brother's woman, you know, then guess what happened to him? He fell off a, what, a two-story, four-story building. Whatever the case, and now his whole half of his body don't work from the um from his stomach down. It doesn't work. You know he's paralyzed from the waist down. 
that's a judgment. That's Masha Pot right there. This dude was saying and showing that, oh, Shalom, you know, Shalom, you know, peace to you, brother, you know. But then covering, looking at his brother's woman. Then, then sleeping with the brother's woman. He didn't do it to just one brother. He did it to multiple brothers. Now, what the Lord did to him from his waist down. So, there's different examples how some brothers, they, they're they not sincere. And the Lord jacked their ass up. But, you know, it coming to this faith, we do learn about that true brotherly love. We're coming back to that. And I'm going to read the precept that I quoted earlier, the curse. In Deuteronomy 20th chapter. Deuteronomy 28. In verse, I'll read verse 15 and jump down to the point. So it says, But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to Yahweh Bashem al thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right? So I'm going to read some of the curses, you know, for us breaking the Lord's, the Heavenly Father's commandments, the Lord's commandments. When you jump down to verse 54, right? It says, So that the man that is tender among you, and very delicate so back then we was tender amongst each other and very delicate you know his eyes shall be evil toward his brother right and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children which he shall leave and who has the most followed his households the so-called blacks hispanics native americans and fathers you know they the eyes be evil towards a woman the woman get pregnant oh, i ain't my baby you know that's a month's jake you see you know down to go to the curse with you know happen to a woman as well but sticking on point with the topic of the lesson, the brotherly love, so our eyes are evil towards our brothers. And we learned that's that was how he was in the world. We come back to this faith, you understand why he was like that in the world, you know, stuff like that. And we repent and show forth that brotherly love within his walk, within his faith. And um let's see. <clears throat> let's get some more then, right? I'm gonna end it off with Matthew 25, that's a beautiful one, but let's get John 15. Right? It's not quoted earlier. So it comes to the faith, you know, it teaches all, you know, all this stuff, man. John 15 and verse, watch this. So chapter is beautiful, man. I love you, I was shy. So let's start verse 12. It says, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. So we got to love one another like the heavenly father's only God's son, our Lord and Savior, how shy loved us. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So you gotta be willing to lay down, lay down your life for this truth, for the for the for the um for the ministry, for the gospel, for the brotherhood. You know, because Esau gonna have different scenarios set up where you know he may be torturing the brother, trying to get information about another brother, whatever the case may be. You gotta hold it down. You know, not like these jakes in the world. You know, they get interrogated for five seconds. They pass him a Big Mac. They pass him some you know some Mickey D's, some French fries, or some Popeyes, and they end up spilling all the tea. Oh, he live right here. He gonna get off of work at this time. And, you know, this is how you can make him break. And, you know, so it's verse, verse uh, 14. Ye are my friends. If ye do what whatsoever I command you. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I've called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. Right? So everything that... um. The Heavenly Father showed forth his, his um, only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, how shy he showed unto us. So he said, I'm not calling y'all servants, you know. I call you guys friends, you know, my young, my brothers, younger brothers. He's our big brother, Yahweh Shah, he's our big brother, man. So we got to learn from that, you know, look at the example that he set forth, you know, in his walk. He laid his life down for us, you know. He fed us with the, with the, um, the bread of life. You know, which we still have right now to this day, the the Rechak Wadash, the Holy Spirit. You know, the uh, rivers of living water. He gave us the wine, you know, the oil you understanding. Right? That's all love right there. You see, rebuke, right? He rebuked Peter, you know. That's less love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. So when we rebuke we rebuke one another, that's brotherly love. See, when the elders and the apostles they get on these different camps that they knew for going back to the, you know, one west, one one west in Harlem. That's love, man. When they get on Bishop Nathaniel, when they get on Jenny Yohanna, when they get on, you know, uh, Zabak, you know, when they get on different, you know, brothers that have been in it for a long time, that's going north of certain doctrines, that's love. You know, they don't hate them, man. You know, then same thing with younger brothers coming in. If we see a brother falling short, going north, we're going to rebuke him. Let him know you're going north. You got to get right. You know, that's love. If we watch him go off and be like, ah, because true, true love. Let me get that scripture. 
Watch this. <clears throat> Proverbs 26, and let's get verse 5. It says, Open rebuke is better than secret love. You know, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Right? So that's faithful, the wounds of a friend, because words may hurt. You may get tell a brother you're going off, you know, you, you went off, you know, saying this or you did this, that was wrong. Or, you know, you lazy right now. You're not putting the work, you know, you're not, you know, you're not coming up to camp. Let's say your brother missed camp five, you know, times every week, you know, five, five weeks. He just don't come to pop up the six week. You think we were supposed to be like, you know, oh, yeah, they come stand on the line, you know. No, we're going to be like, brother, what the, where the fuck you been at, man? And, that, and that's his heart may, you know, his heart may drop. He may, you know, feel like he's wounded. But that's a faithful wound from a friend. Like, brother, where you been at? What you been doing? Why are you not coming out here? Why you, you know? That's the faithful wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Oh, don't worry about it, brother. You know? I know you missed five weeks. <laughs> don't worry about it, man. You can miss You want to take a vacation? You know, get it. That's a deceitful, man. That's the enemy right there. That means he don't love you. He don't like you. You see? That's not true brotherly love. See, brotherly love is not all just hugging each other. It's rebuking each other as well. You know? And I was spirit because I wasn't planning on be reading this, man. So one time from the top, verse 27, verse um, 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So, like a lawyer, how was shot? He rebuked Peter. When Peter, uh, uh, what did what did the apostle Peter say? Uh, he got carnal. Basically, Apostle Peter got carnal. He said, get thee hence Satan. He called him Satan, man. You know, the Apostle Peter probably was Satan. You know? <laughs> that, was, that was that wound of a friend, of, you know, of Yahweh Shai. And, you know? So, same thing today. You want to see someone going off, man. You let them know you're going off, brother. You know, you got to get right. You see, that's faithful wounds of a friend. That's true brotherly love. You know, another thing, too, I'm going to mention, you know, uh, save, like, in his ministry and his truth. And you, we learn this from the elders and apostles, you know? Brothers is, brothers is falling short, you know, by way of financially. Say brothers lost his job. He can't pay the rent. can't pay bills. He got a ticket as due IRS at him. You know, if brothers got, got means to help, do what you can. You know, I'm not going to mention certain brothers that, you know, was in need and brothers, you know, came through. That's all part of the work, man. That's all part of the ministry. That's all part of that love. But that's a part of that brotherly love. We didn't learn that in the world, man. <laughs> you know? In the world, you know, you ask your friend, you know, they got it. You ask your boy, I need help. I need this. Oh, I can't, man. I can't. <laughs> you know, I, I experienced this, man. People that was supposed to be my, you know, friends that I knew since I was a child. When I really asked them for something, I really wanted and needed it, whatever. And they didn't come through, man. You see? Because they wanted to do other things. So they were thinking about what can I do with the money that he asked me for. You see? But in his faith and his truth... Be like, okay, what I, what I can give, I give this, you know, I like, bam, do this, and all the brothers collectively give, and boom, that brother's, you know, he's well off now. Now he's he's set, you know, now he's able to get back on his feet until until he finds a new job or whatever the case, you know, as an example, right? So that's all brotherly love, you know, being charitable, right? Being charitable is brotherly love. Giving alms is giving to the poor. That's another thing, too, you know, giving to the poor, you know, paying types is, you know, 10% to the priest. You know, but just less than going to charity, brotherly love. So from there, we won't get an account, right, in the scripts with King David and Jonathan, right? Because that was real close, man, right? First Samuel 18 and verse 3, and, you know, Jonathan was King Saul's son, and King Saul was trying his best to kill King David, man, because he had a demon on him. He had de he had spirits on him, and King David knew it, but that's how you know King David was a... um. A righteous man because even when King Saul died, he didn't rejoice. He didn't say, yeah, finally, you know, my op is dead. No, he he mourned, he fasted. You see? So first Samuel 18 and 3. Then Jonathan and let's read I'm sorry, verse one. It says, And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And he he loved him as he loved himself. And Saul took him that day and would and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. You know, that was real close, man. You know, King David and Jonathan was real close. They loved each other. They they like they loved their own soul, right? And uh, when they passed, when Jonathan and um, King Saul passed, 
Let's see if I get that quick precept. I'm not going to be all of this. This is a pretty long chapter. Right? But let's jump down to the point. Because you had the, the, the Malachite who came back, you know, thinking to receive something from, you know, basically thinking he going to receive King David's praises because he told him that Saul was dead and he leaned upon his own spear. And then Saul told him to kill him, which he lied about that, right? But he just thought King David would give him a reward or something like that because he knew that King Saul tried to kill King David. But the Amalekite, right? The King David had got him put to death. He said, man, man, he said, why are you not afraid to fall up, um, to harm or destroy the Lord's anointed? Let's read that. I'm going to read it from there. Then I'm going to jump down. So, no, verse 12, it says, verse 11, then David took hold on his clothes and rent them. So when he found that a King Saul and Jonathan was dead, he did what? He took hold on his clothes and rent them. And likewise, all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even. So they went on a fast. For Saul and for Jonathan, his son, and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young men that told him, Whence art thou? He answered, I am the son of a stranger and a Malachite. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died, put him to death. He said, Since you want to speak, you know, this is what I'm saying, right? Verse 16. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hath testified against thee. Since you want to speak and say you killed King Saul, now you're dead, man. You know? And King Saul, think about it. King Saul was trying his best to kill King David. But look how King David, that's why he's a righteous man. You know, a man after the most of his own heart. Right? He, he didn't give the Malachite a reward. Oh, you kill King Saul, he is lit. Thank you for that. No, man. He mourned. Right? Saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Right? So let's read verse 16 again. And David said unto him, Thy blood be upon thy head, for thy mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. And David lamented with this with, with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. And I just read in 1 Samuel, I believe the 18th chapter, how Jonathan and, and David loved each other as they, as they loved their own soul, which is in the law. You know, which is what our Lord Yahweh Shah said, love thy neighbor as they love yourself. Right? So let's jump down to that I want to get. <clears throat> Where's it at? <clears throat> oh, that was a point. No, 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 right here. So verse 25, how are thy mighty, this is what King David is saying, how are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou was slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? So that's how you know they, they was real close, man. You see that? They was real close because they, you know, man. So, and if you read that account, it was kind of sad too, right? We go into it because Jonathan, you know, he's out of the house of David for a fact, right? But um, from there, I want to get this account right here with, uh, and second Samuel ninth chapter for Jonathan's son. So this showed how much King David loved Jonathan, because look what he did for Jonathan's son. Right? Let's read it. Second Samuel 9 and verse 3. And the king said, Is there not yet any any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of the heavenly father unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan have have yet a son which is lame on his feet, he couldn't walk. And um and king and the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, and um, Lodabar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when um, Mahishobeth, uh, Mahi Bosheth, right, or, or uh, Mephibosheth, right, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was coming to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, um, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. So he said, What? Don't be afraid. I'm going to show kindness for your father's sake. That's brotherly love, man. You know, that's another thing too. You know, brothers, you know, some say a brother got... Um, children whatever the case may be you know and you know i'm, I'm thinking in future wise because you know of course this different scenario with king david jonathan and time went by 
you know, of course, he looked out for Jonathan's son. Now, if he was able to do something like that, that's another thing too, showing brotherly love. He said, for Jonathan's sake, look what I'm going to do for you. You're going to always eat at my table. And King David was the king. So if he had his table, he had a spot in the king's table, man. So, you know, he was decked out. He was good. Right? And he said, I'm going to give you all the land that saw your father. All the land that was belonging to King Saul, you won't have all of that. You see? It says, and he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? He was humble. He said, you know, who am I that I should get all this stuff, man? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said as him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Right, and it says, Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring it, bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mahibo Chef, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. And then says Ziba unto the king, according to all that my lord have the king have commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mehibosheth, right, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. So he adopted him to like his own, you see. And Mehibosheth had a son whose name was Makah, and all that door in the house of Ziba was servants of Mehibosheth. So now he got servants, he decked out, he's like one of the king's sons, he had the king's table. You see, that's brotherly love that he strove for, that's, you know, for Jonathan's sake. So Mehibosheth Chef dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. So that's point to get on that, man. You know, King David, that was a little quick little account. King David, Jonathan, you, you can go more into, you know, detail and history on it. But, you know, Jonathan was going back and forth with his father. Like, why you want to kill David for? What did he do? King Saul knew in the back of his mind that King David was anointed to be king next. And he was jealous, basically. He had an evil spirit placed on him because he disobeyed the heavenly father. Right? So from there... I believe I got everything I had lined up through the Spirit, so I'm ending it off with Matthew 25th chapter. And I pray this is an edifying lesson, you know, straight to the point. Let's get this. Matthew 25 and verse 34, it says, no, 31. When the Son of Man, which is Yahweh, which is Yahweh Shai, shall come in his glory, when he make a second coming, and all the holy angels with him, he come back with all the holy angels, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered, gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. So he's going to separate all, you know, gather all nations. He's going to separate one from another, his sheep from the goats, right? His sheep are his, you know, the elect. The goats are is Esau, right? But then also you got wicked Israelites. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. You know what that means? Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, so are the sheep's. The, the elect it says come ye ye bless of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world so all, all those that's on his right hand the sheeps he said listen come you know inherit this beautiful kingdom that has been prepared for you from the, before the world was even created right verse 35 watch this, this is the main point verse 35 for i was in hunger and he gave me meat i was thirsty and he gave me drink I was a stranger, and he took me in, naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them. So they basically asked, like, you know, you know, when did we do this for you? I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember you seeing you in prison and I came and visited you. I remember, you know, you being naked and I gave you um, clothing. I remember you being hungry and I gave you food or thirsty and I gave you some water. I don't remember this, you know. So uh, verse 40, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of these least, one of these, um, no, no. One more time from the top, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So what we do for the brethren, we do it unto Yahweh Shai. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye curse into everlasting fire. Don't taste that fire from the chariots, the nuclear missiles, prepare for the devil, the adversary, nor the, the deceiver, you shall eat him, and his angels, his army, his military. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. 
naked and you clothe me not, sick and in prison and you visit me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when shall we thee in hunger or thirst or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have as ye did it not to the to the, um, one of these least of these, ye did it not to me. So that's why we, you know, of course, in this faith and the truth, we watch how we speak to brothers. You know, watch how we treat brothers, you know? Because <laughs> Yahweh Shah watching, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is paying close attention to all of that, man. You can't you can't have no secret grudges, you know, for brothers, secret, you know, jealousy or hatred towards brothers. You want you want they spot, you know, you wanna None of that, man, because Yahweh Shah looking like, yo, you see, brother's in need, and you sitting there, you have it, but you like, I'm out like I don't, you know, I ain't helping his brother out. Brother's in prison, and he need bail money. Nah, <laughs> you know, you do that, the Lord like, man, you, so you're not doing it for me. Because that's another thing, too, you got to try, you got to try the spirit, you know, try the works. You don't know a man about his fruits. You can know, if, a, if you know a brother's sincere, you know, in this thing, you know, do, do whatever you can for that brother. You know, if they're not sincere, you know, fr the, the fruit's going to show, right? Verse 46, and it also says, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So that's our goal, man. We want eternal life. So this is not, this is a step towards it, you know? This truth, this gospel, this ministry, you know, we're on that bridge to immortality and that bridge of Yahweh Shai. And we got to walk in his footsteps, you know, follow after the patterns that he left for us. You know, if we want to be, you know, live eternal life, you know, so, you know, quick lesson, you know, we should all meditate upon this because, you know, growing in his faith and his truth, this is a part of it. You know, you grow with that brotherly love, you know, and um, and treating those that believe in how Bashim Yahweh Shai with much respect, reverence, honor, all of that. Because, you know, like a Lord Yahweh Shai said, a prophet is without honor saving his own home. You see that? And so that's why, you know, brothers see brothers across the states, across the world, pushing the word. We say a shalom. We bless him in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Keep pushing, you know, beautiful, mighty lesson. That's giving reverence. That's giving honor to that brother, man. You see that? But brothers, you know, any person in life don't receive that, you know, unless it's coming from um, another brother. So it says, um, last one again from the top, Matthew twenty-five and forty-six. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous, the elect, right? which we, you know, striving to be a part of, which consists of men, women, and children, you know, because, you know, the women and the children play a role as well, but, you know, the, the, it's mainly with the men, but the women play a role as well. They donate, you know, they uh, pay tithes. Uh, they show forth that love as well in ways that they can. May make a garment, may, uh, you know, send gifts, whatever the case may be, you know, that's their lot, you see? And they're gonna get rewarded for such. Oh, that reminded me what happened to, um, to the elder Manata Zagba. You know, you had that family, man. It was a beautiful account. The family came, they traveled like what? I believe, I don't know how many hours. Uh, I'm not even gonna make it up. I think it was like six hours to like 12 hours. One of those, it was a long drive they drove, or 10 hours, something like that. Drove to just to give the, the elder um, Manata Zagba and the brother um, Yawan gifts, man. You know, that's the Lord, look at that. And he, he wrote that down. Like, okay, that's a reward for this family. You know, so that's another thing too, man. We gotta, you know, always make sure that we doing things in truth and sincerity. And of course, man, scripture say what charity covered the multitude of sins, brotherly love. So, Lord Williams is edified. So it says, but righteous into life eternal. So we want that life eternal, right? So Lord Williams is edified through spreading probably Yahweh Shai. I'm gonna give call Lion Law Yahweh, Baasham Yahweh Shai, Baasham Mechakudash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad, pushing his truth in sincerity. With that, I'm going to say, Shalom. And may Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Chak Wadash, Babak Shah, Babak Shah, Babak Shah, Ababa, the water, the yard, Tawah, Aman, Shalom.